This video is about how to design a bandpass box. A bandpass box is more complicated to design and to build than a ported box, so make sure you watch the box design and port design videos before you get into bandpass design. Like the other videos, I'm using the Infinity 1252W and uh, I've already entered the three teal and small parameters for that uh, subwoofer here. I've got FS of 24.23, QTS of 0 0.48, VAS of 3.48 cubic feet. And for reference purposes, I've entered in a 2 cubic feet ported design. Let's add a new data set. We'll select band pass. Now, one thing to notice is it's asking us for box volume, but it's asking us also for something that we haven't seen before. This is the ported fraction of box volume. It's not asking us for the port frequency. It's showing you down here what it is, but uh, it calculates it automatically to optimize the design. So this ported fraction of box volume, if you look at the little picture here, in a bandpass box, the box is internally divided into two chambers. There's the sealed chamber shown right here and there's the ported chamber shown right here. And so this ported fraction of box volume is asking you where do you want to move the dividing line between the ported and the sealed. And if we click here it gives a hint that says 25 to 50% 50, 50 typical. Let's uh, start with 25 and I will uh, add a data description call this bandpass 2.0 that's for the box volume 25 percent and update the plot well the green line shows us uh, not only do we have a low frequency roll-off but we also have a high frequency roll-off and that's why this is called a bandpass design. Now let's add uh, another uh, data set. We'll make this one 50%. We'll show both extremes. And I'll just add a label for it. 2.0 cubic feet, 50%. So now we can see uh, both extremes of uh, both recommended extremes of a bandpass design as well as a, a ported design all in the same uh, volume of box, two cubic feet. And so a couple of uh, observations here. Uh, the yellow box is much more efficient than the green. Uh, it's, it's about 6 dB louder and that translates to amplifier power. 6 dB uh, translates to four times the power. So if you had a needed a hundred watt uh, amp to get uh, the uh, desired volume level in, in a ported or, or this yellow bandpass, you would need a 400 watt amp for the green curve just to shift it up so that it's the same volume level. Another thing to notice is the bandwidth. The yellow curve is a narrower bandwidth than the green. It's about half the bandwidth. Well, that's a bad thing. If the bandwidth gets too narrow, the, the bandpass sub starts to sound like a one-note thump. You may have heard uh, some cars driving down the road where every uh, thump that you hear sounds exactly the same, and it, it's probably from a bandpass box that's got a very narrow uh, uh, frequency range. Now if you don't care about amplifier power, all you care about is the frequency response, you can select this feature here, normalize plot to 0 dB. I'll update the plot. It just does them one at a time, so there I've normalized the yellow. I'll go to the green and normalize it too. <clears throat> so here we can see more uh, dramatically the difference in the bandwidth between the yellow and the green. The green is about twice as wide as the yellow. And that's a good thing. 
The problem is it isn't really centered where we want. We've got bass down to 20 hertz. Uh, well, that's not. There's not much music content down there. It would be nice if we could shift this whole thing to the right. And uh, I'll show you how you can do that. Uh, but first, I'm going to uh, turn this off. I, I do like to see the volume level. I don't like to normalize it. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Let's add another data set. Band pass. 2.0 and I won't put anything more since we're just going to be playing here. Uh, let's try something in between, maybe 40. Well here this may be a good compromise. It's it's a little wider bandwidth than the yellow but it's still that we don't take the huge efficiency uh, loss that we have in the green. Now the comment I made earlier, wouldn't it be good if we could shift this up? Well, we can do that by changing the box volume. And uh, uh, the way to make the frequencies shift up is to make the box volume smaller. So let's try uh, just a, a small change. How about a 1.5 cubic feet? Well, it, it was a small shift, but it, it was a, a good shift. And we can see now that, well, I, let me normalize this. Uh, we can see the minus 3 dB points at 30 hertz and about 98.2. That's not bad. Uh, so you can play with this uh, to your heart's content, adjusting uh, the bandwidth, the sensitivity, uh, the, the uh, null in the middle until you have found what you think is the best compromise uh, but uh, what I'd like to do next is just take a look at how you design the port so to, let's uh, do a port design for the 40% uh, ported fraction of box volume and the 1.5 cubic feet that's the, the blue curve so let's just uh, assume that uh, we think that that's the best Okay, going to the port design tool, it asks, what is the ported enclosure volume? Well, here you have to be careful. Uh, you don't want to put in the 1.5 cubic foot box. That's the whole box. This tool just wants to know the ported enclosure volume. Well, uh, we said we wanted 40% of the volume to be ported, so we actually have to get out the calculator here and multiply 40% or 0.4 times 1.5. So that ends up being 0.6 cubic feet. Now the port frequency, I told you uh, before that uh, it calculates it automatically and uh, here we can see what it is, 53.5. We'll use a single port, port inner diameter well, this is a 12 inch sub. The rule of, of thumb down here, you use a port diameter at least one third of the woofer. That would be four inches. And the net result is that the port length is 16.8 inches. So, going back to the figure, uh, you would build a box that's 1.5 cubic feet. You would have an internal divider at the 40% point and the subwoofer would actually mount in that internal wall dividing the, the sealed chamber and the ported chamber and the port would be a 4 inch by 16.8 inch long tube. 